growing calls for his resignation. The racist yearbook picture now seen round the country. I reflect it with my family and classmates from the time and affirmed my conclusion that I am not the person in that photo. The first ever female flyover. There was never a question in my mind whether I could fly combat roles in today's Navy. The inspiration behind today's flight. This night, it went all the way up to my top of my head. And in her darkest days, a wink from God. I believe that I did not wear that costume or attend that party stems in part from my clear memory of other mistakes I made in the same period of my life. It's not me in the racist picture, the governor says. The most powerful voices in the Commonwealth calling for his resignation. The president of EVMS calling for an investigation to yearbooks and campus culture. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 11. I'm David Allen. For Governor Northam, it was a day of denial, apologies, and a commitment to stay on the job. 13 News Now reporter Jacqueline Lee starts off our team coverage tonight. David, today in Richmond, Governor Northam pushed back against what is now a growing chorus of voices calling for his resignation. In his latest about face, Northam says it's not him in that racist photo. Calls for the governor to resign growing even louder. His in that joint statement between Senator Warner, Kane, and Representative Bobby Scott, they said that they came to their decision because the events of the past 24 hours have inflicted immense pain and irrevocably broken the trust Virginians have in their leaders. Jacqueline Lay, 13 News Now. Earlier today, former Governor Douglas Wilder tweeted that the decision to stay in office was Northam's. Now, after today's press conference, he says the only choice is for the governor to resign. President Trump tweeted after Northam left the podium. He said Democratic Governor Ralph Northam of Virginia just stated, I believe that I am not either of the people in that photo. This was 24 hours after apologizing for appearing in the picture and after making the most horrible statement on super late-term abortion unforgivable. Earlier today, Virginia Attorney General Mark Herring released a statement saying it's no longer possible for Governor Northam to lead our Commonwealth and it's time for him to step down. I have spoken with Lieutenant Governor Fairfax and assured him that should he ascend to the governorship, he will have my complete support. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper adding his voice to this. He released a statement saying this is reprehensible. That picture, that is deeply disappointing and I know must come with pain beyond what many of us can even understand. Resignation is the only way forward. Our team coverage continues tonight from EVMS. The president of the medical school is directing an external investigation into the past yearbooks and campus culture. 13 News Now reporter Adriana de Alba is live at EMS where this scandal all unfolded. Adriana? David, earlier today we had the chance to spend some time in the EVMS library to take a closer look at that yearbook and try to figure out how a picture like that would end up getting published. It turns out that wasn't the only picture of students in blackface. Well, it's not me. Uh, and it was horrific. And the fact that it was on my page was just unacceptable. During we also reached out to the student editor of the yearbook along with other yearbook staff, but we did not hear back. Adriana, how quickly might the EVMS investigation happen? Well, the president wants it done as soon as possible, David, and that investigation will look into what process went into publishing these yearbooks, whether administration was involved in overseeing them, and lastly, campus culture. Adriana, thank you. Whether Governor Northam survives all of this appears very much in doubt tonight. Today, he acknowledged when it comes to race, the Commonwealth has a lot of work to do. But how can he lead those discussions? I spoke with Vivian Page, a blogger and political activist. She said race is a difficult topic, and Ralph Northam has lost credibility to lead. Governor admitted that he has blackface in his background. So once you admit that, he can be a person who can participate in the conversation and talk about what he's learned, but he has a hard time leading that kind of a conversation. Paige said she feels Governor Northam has grown in his understanding of the struggles of race, but he still must now resign. If Ralph Northam resigns, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax would move up. 
Fairfax is 39. He's the second African American to be elected to statewide office in Virginia. The first was Governor Doug Wilder. Fairfax is an attorney. He served as an assistant U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia. He went to Columbia Law School and Duke University. Well, let's look back at the past 24 hours. The yearbook picture surfaced yesterday afternoon. Around 7 o'clock last night, Governor Northam released a statement saying, in part, a website published a photograph of me from my 1984 medical school yearbook in a costume that is clearly racist and offensive. Later, there was a video apology. This morning, Northam changed his position, saying he doesn't believe he was in the picture. This afternoon, around 2.45, he denied he was in the picture. Our team coverage will continue to uncover new details in this story. Trust us to keep you updated on air. And with the free 13 News Now app, we'll bring you the latest information as it comes out. A Navy vet is turning one of her darkest moments into something bright. Next, the woman leading a helping hand. Just in, Virginia State Police have determined a fatal fire in Accomack County is an arson and homicide case. This happened around 1045 yesterday morning at a home on Johnson Court. Troopers found the remains of two adults and a child inside the home. Their identities have not yet been released. If you have any information, call state police. Investigators are looking into a plane crash on Knott's Island. We're told it happened around 5 o'clock. Currituck County Fire EMS and Knott's Island volunteers found the small plane in a marsh off of Knights Point. We're told the flight took off from Suffolk Executive Airport and experienced mechanical issues. The pilot was the only one on board and he was not hurt. Today, pilots from NAS Oceana honor the life of a female pioneer in naval aviation. This is video of their first ever all-female flyover for retired Navy Captain Rosemary Mariner. Mariner died last week after fighting cancer for five years. She was the first woman to land on aircraft carriers and to command a squadron a beacon for women pilots who followed. Never question in my mind whether I could fly combat roles in today's Navy. And more doors are opening every day. Today's tribute was the highest honor for a Navy aviator. Mariner retired as a captain in 1997. Her impact on the skies and on the ground was immeasurable. A local Navy vet who overcame a brain tumor is using her diagnosis to help others. Samaria Hunter formed a support group called Winks from God. Erin LeBeau shows us how Hunter is using what she thought would kill her to help others. It was an unexpected diagnosis. To my thought, brain tumor meant death. Her hope is to help someone else along the way. I'm Erin LeBeau, 13 News Now. Winks from God meets every last Thursday of the month. For more information, their website is winksfromgod.org. Today, thousands braved the icy waters of the Atlantic for the annual polar plunge. It officially kicked off yesterday near the Hilton on 31st Street. But the big plunge was this afternoon. It raises money for the Special Olympics. It also included races, a costume contest, and a parade. Rachel Pert joins us now with your forecast. And in a couple of days from now, that would have been a pretty nice swim in the ocean, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, at least coming out, I think the temperatures in the water are still about 40 degrees. I know I don't really want to go outside when it's 40 degrees, much less get into the water. But much warmer air is on the way. We'll be at the south side, could get a few drops on the uh, windshield when you're coming back out of those Super Bowl parties tomorrow. Monday, mild early showers, and then we're into the 60s, close to 70 degrees by Tuesday. Michelle, that looks like spring. It does look like close. spring. Close. We'll take great. it. All right, we'll take it. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. All right, there's a big game tomorrow, but there was a big game tonight. Several yeah. key games tonight, particularly a busy day of college hoops around the Commonwealth. It includes the ODU Monarchs, who were trying to maintain the top spot in Conference USA with their matchup against the Rice Owls. All right, big game. All right, that's 13 News Now at 11. Thanks for joining us, everyone. You can always find the latest news, weather, and sports, all of that online at 13newsnow.com. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.